Good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon. This is Apostle Michelle McLean Walters. I am so excited this afternoon. I have one of my favorite preachers on with me tonight. Uh, this afternoon, actually, Apostle Brian Meadows is with us. I'm telling you, this man is brilliant. Uh, I believe he's a great uh, apostolic prophetic mind. I am excited that he's going to be with us and he's going to be one of our VIP speakers at the Chosen Conference that's going to be held August 31st through September 2nd. We are so excited to have him with us. He's such a busy man. God has done so many phenomenal things. I've known him for many years. And one of the things I can say about Apostle Brian, he has been consistent. His message is consistent and he's only getting stronger and stronger. So I want to welcome him to the stage. I want to welcome Apostle Brian Meadows. Hey, Apostle, how are you? What it do? What it do? Can you hear me? Can you see me? I can hear you. I can see you. I can hear you. Can you hear me? I can hear you. I can see you. I always want to make sure that there's no technical difficulties in this creative, in this digital generation. Uh, there's so many wires, so many connection points. It's so easy for stuff to be, uh, to mess up, for stuff to be out of order. And so for us to be able to see each other and talk to each other, it is a blessing. I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm doing well. I just wanted to uh, welcome you today. I just really want the people to really understand who you are. I mean, we see your powerful messages, but I, I saw you in your beginnings. I, I really yeah. saw you in your uh, beginnings. And, you know, I always commend you as a young man with all of the resilience and, you know, all of the opposition that you went through. I really call you a modern day forerunner. I really believe right. uh, that God has anointed you in this hour to bring forth a powerful message. I I really believe that you're gonna you're one that uh champions the creatives that champion the creative and mm -hmm. and you've really had to deal with a lot of old wine skins <laughs> yes, yes you really had to deal with a lot of old wine skins can you kind of just say hello to the chosen audience and just kind of talk to us a little bit about who you are and you know how did you get started you know with this creative message Yes, ma'am. Well, first of all, uh, you said we've known each other for a long time. I don't know. That's an understatement. I feel like ever since I've been saved, I've known you. Uh, ever since I've started on this apostolic journey, uh, you've been my my big sister, my auntie, mother in the spirit. You've always been there as a midwife to push me into my neck. So first of all, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity. The Chosen Conference, I've been a part of it a couple of times, and it is by far one of the most amazing gatherings for five-fold men for those in ministry, for senior pastors, and just those that are really seeking the heart of God for something significant, a move of God, an encounter. Chosen is the conference to be it. It's solid. It's balanced. It's theologically accurate. Um, there's a move of God. There's connectivity. I just think that every time that I've come to Chosen, it has been an, an amazing experience, and I can't wait to be a part of it this year. I cannot wait to be a part of the VIP. The VIP is going to be awesome, um, but really my apostolic beginnings, my etymology, the genesis um, uh, began I, 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 when, I was, uh, when I was really, really young. I started doing martial arts when I was a child, and that started me kind of down this spiritual path. I end up uh, really taking a liking to Buddhism. Most of my friends were Asian and they were Buddhist. And so I ended up becoming a Buddhist at a very, very young age, just seeking spirituality, you know, seeking things of the spirit. Uh, and sometimes, you know, not really knowing what I was seeking, but I became a Buddhist and I practiced uh, Buddhism for eight years until I had an encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, I remember it was May 2004, in my living room, uh, in the basement of my mom's house and uh, just watching TV. And I end up having a face to face encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ. And he said, son, I have a great work for you to do. And I said, Lord, if you're going to use me, use all of me. And just like Paul came to himself, just like the prodigal son came to himself, just like Adam awoke and came to himself. I kind of woke up not knowing what had happened. And that started my journey uh, into ministry. I got saved in 2004. I started I got licensed uh, in 2005 and I've been preaching ever since. Uh, but the, the growth and the maturation of what the Lord was doing really started to take place uh, in Chicago. When I started to meet you and other friends like Stephen Garner and Apostle John Eckhart and Greg House, coming to those types of uh, events, coming to those types of gatherings where there were seasoned men 
seasoned women. Uh, I'm uh, 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 Posey. You remember Michael Posey and all of them. They did not play games. David <laughs> Rogers, all of them. And they really gave me a firm foundation in apostolic ministry. This was not a joke. It was not about titles. It was not about popularity. It was about effectiveness. It was about um, uh, discipleship. It was about growing healthy and safe churches. And that's really where I got my start. And of course, you were there as well. Uh, and so, yeah, that's my beginnings. I really like that because I feel uh, this generation is really missing that. You know, where you have that the, the title of the conference is chosen from generation to generation. So I'm endeavoring in this season to gather the generations. You know, uh, you, when you got, like you mentioned, Apostle Posey, he's also going to be a minister there. And through these, wow. I believe through these gatherings, there's going to be an impartation that you cannot get by yourself. You know, of course, you have to do your study. You have to spend your time in the presence of the Lord. But I believe God is, is mandated for one generation yes. to impart to the next generation. Can you kind of talk about that, the power of impartation? Yes. OK, so we are in a season of transition. Uh, every industry, every institution that props up the family of man, we are seeing them go through evolutionary changes um, and not just business, not just arts and entertainment, not just government, but even the church. The church is in transition. Uh, but every season of transition is also a season of succession, because when we start to go from one age to another, like you said, from one generation to another, as one generation begins to expire, another generation must rise to the standard and to the challenge. And so every season of transition is a season of succession, but every season of succession is also a season of impartation, because whenever we're going from one generation to the next generation, it is not God's will that we lose any anything in transition. Every encounter the fathers have had, all the revelation, all the wisdom, the impartation, uh, everything that God gave the last generation, he doesn't want it to be lost while we transition to another generation. So God activates this technology called mantles, mantles, and mantles are like time capsules. They hold the wisdom, the experiences, the encounter, and the revelation of the previous generation so that it can be passed down to a future generation. And whenever we are in a season of transition, you will see God beginning to activate mantles, that connectivity. You know, Malachi talks about before that great and terrible day, he will uh, turn the hearts of the fathers back to the children and the hearts of the children back to the fathers. Because whenever we are in a season of transition, this collaboration, this synergy and this uh, 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 cross pollination must happen in order for us to transition in a healthy and strong way. And I believe that that's what's going to happen at Chosen. For so many people, People that feel called, but they don't necessarily um, uh, have a mantle, have an assignment, have covering, have connectivity, have accountability. For so many people that feel like, hey, I feel like there's a great call in my life, but I don't have the, uh, the association. I don't have the community. Um, for people that are looking for language, for people that are looking for encounters, they're going to get that at chosen for the, for everybody that feels chosen you need to have a conference there needs to be a gathering that explains and gives you language and puts you around other people that feel just as chosen feels just as watch me just as picked and picked on as you you need to be at this conference and so i'm i'm so excited that we can add language and teach a little bit around uh generations and mantles and creativity it's going to be awesome I, I thank you for saying that because I really believe it's so important that we get an understanding that we've been chosen, but yes. many are called, a few are chosen. So I believe God has called us all. Chosen is not like God goes through the, a sea of humanity and he begins to say, I choose you and I, not you, I choose you. But being chosen is all about our response. We've yes. been, before we were in our mother's womb, he chose us. But if we don't respond properly, you really will miss out. You can miss out on your destiny or it can take you longer to get where God wants you to be. So These can you kind of talk about, you know, you're still talking about the, I, I'm, I'm writing a book. I'm finishing. I'm actually editing. My next book is on the spirit and the power of Elijah. So I've been really talking about this turning of the hearts. You know, I just believe God is turning the hearts of the fathers to the sons and the daughters and those that don't have an ability to give anything back. You know, I just believe God is really aligning uh, this apostolic prophetic sons and daughters uh, 
realm. I'm just going to, I'm going to no. say it that way because there's been so right. much perversion and yes. I just believe God is raising up strong apostolic fathers and mothers. They don't have age. It's not about age, but it is, it's about a, a tested and tried anointing. Can you kind of talk to us about that? I know I've heard you talk about that many times in your teachings, yeah. but can you just share a little bit about the apostolic fathers yeah. and mothers and, you, you know, really transferring to the <laughs> generation. You got me, you got me, you got me stirred up. You got me stirred up because <laughs> you said a few things and I'm just like, that is so needed. Number one, it's not about age or follower count. See, this is the issue that we have in this digital generation is that we think, okay, whoever has the most followers is the leader. <laughs> you know, whoever, whoever is most popular is the leader. And many times you can miss out on moments of destiny, moments of impartation. You can miss out on moments that will change your life because, oh, I've never heard of that conference. Or, I've never heard of that preacher. Or, I've never heard of that. Don't mean nothing. And you, you have to have the Holy Spirit, having the Holy Spirit and being sensitive is so needed in this season because there's so much stuff that you have to discern through both profane and prophetic so that you aren't, you know, so that you don't waste time. But I do think that many times we waste time because we are looking at the outward appearance. The scripture is very clear that man looks at the outward appearance, the followers, the likes, the shares, but it is God that looks at the heart. And so I do believe that this is a call, not just for those that are looking for a popular gathering. This is not just those that are looking for the next headline speaker. This is for those that know, hey, look, my sheep know my voice and a stranger they will not follow. I hear something in this in this gathering. I hear something in this woman of God. I hear something in this moment and I need to be there. I don't want anybody to miss that um, because it may not look like or sound like or feel like whatever they uh, whatever else they've seen. This is a clarion call. And I believe that everybody that comes, they're going to have an encounter with the Lord. But, uh, and I know I ain't even answer your question. What was your question? I, I, I got it. You, you triggered. Me. You triggered. <laughs> I don't know. My question was, I wanted you just to talk about, you know, the, the transference with the fathers, you know, we have this whole thing about yeah, apostolic right. fathers and sons. So what, what do you, what, what does the true, uh, a healthy relationships between apostolic, you know, fathers and sons, you know, how can I say this? I'm trying when not to, I'm, I'm it, trying to protect no, the guilty is what I'm trying to do. But this is the question. Do you, like you've seen, so I've seen so many people call themselves, you know, I'm your apostolic father or your apostolic yeah. mother, but the sons are required to give something to that apostolic father. But I believe yeah. what God is doing in this hour, he's raising up true spiritual mothers and fathers who are going to pour into the next generation yes. and they don't have to be the next voice. They may be the person, you know, they be maybe the Elijah in the wilderness. They may not have the big platform because I noticed now this is just your big sister talking. I noticed a lot of people jumped on the bandwagon with you when you got that big building. Oh, you was the great, you was, come on, this is the apostolic mother talking. <laughs> well, you became popular. Time. So, so kind of talk about that. <laughs> Well, that's my time. <laughs> but uh, no, uh, you want to say bandwagon right. like, spiritual mothers and fathers. Right. No, but you said something that was so uh, amazing about um, the sons not having anything to give the fathers. What we have seen in the past is transactional relationships. Bishop Joby Brady, Pastor Brady, they saw me when I was in a garage, when I was, when nobody knew me, you knew me, a few other people knew me, but nobody was checking on me. Nobody was, you know, that type of deal. And they were my pastors. They're still my pastors to this day. They still check on me. I'm still accountable to them. And I think that so many times there isn't a system of accountability. There isn't a system um, of correction. And so a lot of these people, they go unchecked. They're in this this circle, they're in this tribe, they're in this network, There's, they got five different spiritual fathers. And I do think that in order for a father to pour without transaction, without expecting anything in return, there still has to be a level of trust. And I think that our generation has to do a better job making sure that the fathers understand this is not a photo op. I'm not trying to utilize your platform or your name, right? Because in the days of old, their platform was their name and integrity. 
in our day, our platform is our marketing and creativity. Those are yes. two totally different worlds, you know? Yes. And so a lot of times they may not have the biggest platform, but we want to use their name to validate. So there does have to be a level of trust in order for there to be this exchange. Impartation travels on a channel called covenant. And if you don't have covenant, if there's no trust, there can be no impartation. Just like when that mantle dropped with Elijah, even though there were other prophets around, we only talk about Elisha, but there were other prophets around. If you study the geography of that encounter, I'm doing this whole teaching on spiritual geography. If you if you study the geography, there were other prophets there, but there were rivers that they could not cross. They were they were bound to other geographical locations. Those rivers represent spiritual channels, spiritual yes. revelation, current. They were not in the current, in the revelation. They were not in the flow of Elijah. Elijah, but Elisha was. And that's why every time Elisha, Elijah said, I'm going here, you don't have to go. Elijah, Elisha said, I'm going with you. Could it be that every time Elijah said, I'm going here, maybe uh, some of the sons of the prophet said, well, look, if you said we ain't got to go, uh, I don't stay here. If we ain't got to go through this, if we ain't got to deal with this correction, I'm going to stay here. It was only Elisha that said, no, I'm going to keep going and I'm going to keep going and I'm going to keep going. And that's what we have to do. So I do think that we are going into a season where the fathers are going to pour without, you know, asking for anything. But I do think as sons, we have to be ready to give everything in order to receive that because it cost them everything in order for them to get it. I agree. I agree. That that's, that was an excellent answer. Excellent. Good answer. Good answer. <laughs> <laughs> but but it's so true. I, I do yeah. believe, you know, there has to be honor. You know, we have to honor um, the next, the, the previous generations. I do believe that what God is doing is on a massive scale. And we that's really good. have to, honor. there has to be mutual honor and respect. And the, I just feel like the next generation that's coming. They have to position themselves to receive the impartation. You know, like yeah, Apostle Paul and Timothy. <laughs> Paul, you said he told Timothy. He said, "Look, Timothy, you know me. You're you're an extension of me. You're not a substitute of, of who I am. You're not a replacement of who I am. But you're an extension. You're an extension of me. So that was that's powerful. But I want to talk about your building. Talk to me about this. I, when I saw that God had broken you through and you received that just such a massive blessing from the Lord. I mean, I must have laughed and shout. You would have thought <laughs> I had an office in the building because I knew it was a sign. It, it's a sign and a wonder for what God is doing for this next generation. And I said, Lord, you just gave Brian uh, uh, his just his playground. He just has a massive playground where he can yes, platform man. the glory and his creative abilities. Can you just kind of talk to us about that testimony? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Well, you've been with us in our previous building and you're going to be with us in this building. I can't wait to have you. I need you to release the word of the Lord over me and my wife over the entire building. Uh, but you were with us in the previous building. So you know what we came from, where we came from. We had our prophetic science conference. You were there for that. And so uh, we were in that building for probably about five years or so. It probably set all of 400, 450 people, the parking lot, you know, were maybe, maybe uh, 60 cars. I mean, it was small, but um, it was, it was what we knew. It was what we needed for the time. And we started having services. We went to two services, then COVID hit. After COVID, we started to have service again and we just outgrew the building. We knew that we needed another space, not just for the you know sanctuary, but for offices, you know, production studio, the other things that we wanted to do. And so we started looking. I mean, for probably about a year and a half, I mean, literally, we looked, we saw warehouses, we saw uh, other churches and everything. Either the churches were too traditional or the warehouses just needed too much work. And so I'm going I'm to I'm be honest. I remember uh, going up to Canada, praying with a man by the name of Bishop Bob Tacky. He revolutionized my prayer life. I remember my car was stolen. That kind of pushed me into prayer. I hit another level of prayer then just trying to find my car and deal with certain, you know, just personal situations. So it's almost like before I got to this point where I was at a desperate 
uh, level needing a building. I had been through so many personal things that had activated a different level of prayer. So by the time we got to this building, we had um, it was September, our 10th year anniversary. This is last year, uh, 10th year anniversary. We had Bishop John Hanna come. Bishop John Hanna came. He preached a message. And at the end of the message, he prayed a prayer of favor over me. We go out to dinner. He's like, hey, Meadows, every building I ever uh, got, I paid for it cash. Well, you know, I'm like, well, bless God for you. I ain't got that right now. I'm like, well, Lord, you know, do something. But I know we need to build it. So he said, you know what you need to do? You need to stack your money, stack your money. That's what he said. So at the end of the month, we had Bishop, uh, we had Pastor Cheryl Brady come preach. Now, this is at the end of the 10 years. At the beginning, we had Pastor John Hanna. At the end of it, we had at the end of the month, we had Pastor Cheryl Brady. She preached a message called stacking your stones. Wow. So the word association, me, I study Hebrew, Greek. I'm a word guy, you know, vines word pictures. I'm, I'm a word. So when he preached, you know, when he told me stack your money and she said stack your stone, I'm like, OK, Lord, what's happening? We go out to dinner after that. Uh, Bishop Brady is in town, too. He has to preach somewhere else. He tells me that on his way to preach, he saw an empty building and he gives me the address. I go look at it. And this is at the end of the 10 years. I go look at this building and it's massive. I'm like, OK, there's no way. I know our budget. I know what we bring. I'm, there's no way. So I pretty much tell Bishop Brady, I'm like, Bishop, I thank you. I appreciate you. But this is something that we can't do. Find out that this is John Gray's old building. This is when John Gray was launching his Atlanta campus. He was using this building. So the next day I'm on the phone, just happened to be on the phone with an entertainer. Uh, I, I tell the entertainer, I'm like, hey, could you pray for me? The entertainer says, hey, well, I told him, I said, can you pray for us? We need a building. The entertainer says, what if I told you I know a pastor that has a building? I'm like, well, who is he? They said, John Gray. I'm like, wait a second. This is crazy. It's too many things. So I end up getting on the phone with John Gray. John Gray hooked us up with the owners to make a long story short. The owners fell in love with us. They were looking for somebody to take the building. They were looking for somebody to take over the building. Um, and we just happened to be at the right place at the right time <laughs> with the right need. They hear me. I can't tell you enough. They let us in the building. They gave us keys without looking at um, finances, without, you know, making us jump through hoops, without a down payment. They just said, hey, look, we want the kingdom of God to be in this area. We want church happening in this facility. We want y'all to have it. And so they gave it to us with the lease agreement. But uh, they understood with the lease agreement, we want to purchase it in the next three to five years. We don't know what's going to go. We don't know what's happening. But let me just tell you that uh, based on the conversation and based on the meetings that we've had in the last week, we may own this before the end of the year. So oh. it's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's crazy. What's happening is crazy. Over 200,000 square feet, $23 million, got two schools, full gym, Sanctuary seat, seats about 4,500 people, almost 5,000 people. It's crazy. And I can't do anything but be humble, uh, be in amazement, uh, be in awe, and to uh, do nothing else. I tell people all the time, I got two, I only got two things to do. I'm 36. I probably got another, hopefully, a good, you know, 40 years left. Good 40 years left. All I, the only responsibilities I have is my family. And building a phenomenal church. Other than that, I don't need nothing else. I don't want nothing else. I want to build a phenomenal apostolic hub for our generation. And I got a 13-year-old to raise. Oh, Lord, help me. And I got a wife. <laughs> Other than that, that's all I got going on. That's my entire life. That's that's all I live and breathe for. So we got to make it work. <laughs> I mean, that is a phenomenal, see, that's what I'm saying. That is a phenomenal uh, testimony of, of the grace and the power of God. And it's a, it's a testimony of someone who's sold out. When you've really given your heart uh, to the Lord and you understand that you've been chosen for such a time as this, I just believe God is going to continue to give you the provision because I saw your heart. I would say in the last three, four years, you went through some testings and some real trying of your faith. And I really saw you, God really pull you to another level of humility. But I really believe that the message, your message of 
power, uh, being true to the Holy Spirit, and even for this generation. I'm going to ask um, Prophetess Brianna to pull me out, and I'm just going to let you flow. What do you mm -hmm. feel like God is saying to us around the chosen? What do we need to do? as far as positioning ourselves to receive certain, I mean, blessings, these blessings that God has given to you. And I, one of the major things I'm concerned about, and I'm talking about for myself, I might, this might be selfish, but I don't want to become the old wine skin. I want to stay oh. fresh. I want to, I'm like, Lord, I know where I've been, but I, I'm like, Caleb, give me my mountain. I'm still here. I got another 20, yes, 30 years to be frontline as well. So kind of talk to us around those things, whatever God puts in your heart, maybe for the next, maybe 15 minutes. I know you have yes, a full day. I'm going to ask her to pull me out and I'm just going to let you flow for where you feel like God is saying to us now. It's about 125 people on here right now. Talk to us. Yes. Well, thank you so much for the space and for the opportunity. Uh, we talked about generations and we talked about transition. The church is in transition and the church is in, uh, um, uh, in, 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 in the church is in transition. And since the church is in transition, we talked about the need for mantles. And there's different types of mantles that we're going to begin to see from mantles of light, which are mantles of revelation and information, mantles of, of influence, mantles of wisdom, mantles of provision and prosperity, uh, mantles of language and communication. But one of the things that I really believe that we're going to see at Chosen and what I'm going to deal with in our particular session are mantles of creativity. Uh, we've, we, we saw the the previous generation do more with less. And that takes a level, a grace and a confidence and anointing of creativity that we don't have. We have everything. We got cameras and lights. We got books and the internet. We got all of the access to all of these technologies, but seemingly we have less results, less effectiveness, less pro productivity and less fruit. The previous generation had less, but they could do more. This is the mark of creativity. And we see this in the book of Judges, Judges chapter 15. Now, I love the book of Judges because it shows us how God transitions. We see God using Moses. Moses is a deliverer. Moses is a warrior. By the time we shift from Moses into the book of Joshua, we're no longer led by a deliverer. The deliverer was a shepherd. He led a flock and then he graduated to leading a people. But by the time we get to the book of Joshua, the 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 the, the, the children of Israel, the nation of Israel is no longer led by just a shepherd or a deliverer. Now we begin to see they're, they're led by a soldier, a warrior, which is Joshua. Joshua is a general. And the purpose of this is Joshua is going to take territory. Now you need a shepherd to lead you out of one, uh, out of one field, out of one flock, out of one place of grazing into another. And this is what Moses did. Moses understood how to do this. For 40 years, he was trained by Jethro. I call this Jethro's administration. For 40 years, Moses is trained by Jethro. And you know what Jethro teaches Moses? He teaches Moses how to guard and guide the flock how to find grass in the desert. See, shepherds know how to do this. They know how to find grass in desert places. And this is how God knew I got the right one to take the children of Israel out of Egypt into a desert place so that they can find grass, find nourishment, find my presence, find a relationship with me. So God used the office of the shepherd, the deliverer, until we get to the book of Joshua. In the book of Joshua, now that we're about to take territory, we're not just grazing, we're not just going around the mountain for 40 years. Now it's time to take territory. Now we're going to have to fight enemies and fight giants and occupy land. God raises up another type of leader, uh, which is a general. Joshua is a general. Joshua is a warrior. Uh, Moses didn't do a lot of fighting. If you remember, he had Aaron and the Levites do a lot of the fighting. But Joshua said, hey, look, give me the sword. I don't need y'all to fight for me. I'm going to go and fight. As for me and my house, we are going to serve the Lord. And we see Joshua have another temperament and take another strategy. God begins to use the warrior. As we begin to shift from the book of Joshua into the book of 
judges, we see God shifting again. We see transition again. We see succession again. We see impartation again, because now God is not going to use just warriors. He's going to begin to use a new office called the judges. And we're going to see different judges rise up. And the word judge is very important because it gives us an understanding of their function. The word judge means to discern. The word judge, the word judge means to measure. The word judge means to understand portion, rank, jurisdiction, and authority. That word judge symbolizes apostolic function. And so in the book of Judges, we see all of these different types of apostolic leaders begin to rise up. One of the most significant leaders that we see is Samson. Now, I know anytime we mention Samson, we mention Samson because of his flaws, because of his discrepancy, because of his weaknesses because of his issues. But I want you to understand with great issues, most likely there's great responsibilities, there's great pressure, there's great gifting, there's great opportunity. The enemy always likes to take somebody with great opportunity and great gifting and give them great amounts of warfare. And this is why it's very important for you to understand that the level of the warfare you are going through right now matches the level of anointing, the level of calling, and the level of assignment that's on your life. If you are going through a lot, please hear me. That means that there is something massive, something so distinct, something so original and something so authentic on your life. And during the chosen conference, I need you to hear me. There is going to be a gathering of those with distinction. There's going to be a gathering of those with differences. There's going to be a gathering of unique mantles and graces and assignments. And that's why you need to be in the room. You need to be at mantles because some of your questions will be answered and some of your pains will be understood. They will be interpreted in this gathering. And this is what uh, this is what we have to understand about Samson. I know we look at his issues. I know we look at his faults, but I want you to understand Samson was a gifted individual. He wasn't just gifted because of his strength. We always talk about his strength, but I want you to understand Samson was gifted because of his creativity, because of his creativity. In Judges chapter 15, the scripture says that Samson takes the jawbone of a donkey. You know, a jawbone. First of all, the, the donkey was dead. It was a dead animal, meaning that it was something that others threw away. It was something that others walked over, stepped over. It was something that others disregarded. Nobody can use that. That's 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 not useful. That's not needed. It's old. It's, it's bad. It's rotting. It's decaying. Nobody can use that. It took somebody creative to turn trash into treasure. It took somebody creative to take what other people threw away, to take what other people stepped on, to to take what other people stepped over and use it to slay a thousand Philistines. Now hear the word of the Lord. I need y'all to hear me. In this season, God is going to take people that other people threw away. Come on, can we get more specific? God is going to take people that the church threw away. God is going to take people that the church looked over, that the church stepped over, that the church threw away because they looked dead. They looked rotting. They looked like they were decaying. They looked, well, they looked like they were a part of a dying system. I need y'all to understand there is going to come a win for those of you that are 20, 30, 40, and even some of you that are 50, but you are stuck in religious systems. You are stuck in systems that are dying. You are stuck, you know, like the knee bone is connected to the hip bone and the hip bone is connected. Your jaw bone is connected to the skull. I'm saying you are connected to a system that is dying and decaying and you think that God cannot use you. I need you to hear me. God is about to reach his hand, just like Samson. God is about to reach his hand into that denomination. God is about to reach his hand into that network. God is about to reach his hand into that organization and he's going to pull you out. He's going to take you. He's going to snatch you out and he's going to use you to do what you never thought you could do. Mantles of creativity are going to be released at this conference. I'm telling you, the colors are going to be brighter. The sounds are going to be more uh, more audible. Uh, the light is going to be bright. Everything, all of your spiritual senses are not just going to be awakened and activated, but they're going to be amplified so that you can do what God has called you to do. This is what mantles of creativity come to do. It comes to give you strategy. It comes to give you uncanny wisdom, inventive perspective. It comes to give you revelation and insight. It comes to give you prophetic sight so that you never get stale. 
The last thing I want to say, if you look at that scripture where, where, where Samson takes the jawbone of an ass or he takes the jawbone of a donkey in the scripture right before that, the scripture says Samson is thirsty. And the only reason he looks at the jawbone and he takes the jawbone, the only reason he does it is because he sees a little bit of water a little bit of refreshing that's hollowed out in the bone of the jawbone. He's thirsty. He's reaching down there to quench his thirst and he just happened to find a weapon. All right. I want to give you a word. There is a refreshing coming. There is a strength coming. There is a, 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 a wind of the Holy Spirit. There is a second wind. You're about to be invigorated and inspired like you've never been before. And it's going to give you strength to do what God has called you to do. There is a wind blowing at the chosen conference. There is refreshing at the chosen conference. You need to be there. Get your strength, uh, get your refreshing. It is going to be amazing. And I can't wait. This is what mantles of creativity does. This is what mantles of creativity does. It refreshes, it revives, it awakens, it restores. When an industry is on its last leg, when an a, a institution is sliding into irrelevancy, what does God do? God sends a win. God sends a little, a, little, a little bit of refreshing, a little bit of revival. That's found in the jawbone. It's found in you taking something that others have threw away. If it, 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 it's found in you taking something that others have neglected, others have said it won't work and you trying it again. And there's going to be a level of creativity, a level of anointing on this assignment. And I believe that there's going to be a release at the chosen conference. I can't wait. I want to see you there. Uh, I can't wait to see you. It is going to be a moment. It is going to be an encounter of epic proportion. And I can't wait. Okay. I know I'm talking a lot. I know I'm, I'm, I'm talking a lot. No, that's what I brought you on here for. I want you to talk. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I love, I can, I can listen to you talk all day. Now, as many times as I looked at that story I, and the, with Samson, Samson and the job, on, I had never looked at the hollowed out with, he saw a little water. Come on, that's you know, this revelation right there. We now I gotta go back and read the story again. I love it. Mm -hmm. I love it. Uh I, I and I see as God gave me you're you're the opening person now. I want you to know that. Woo! I believe God is good. He's opening up the conference with releasing mantles of creativity because I believe yes. it's needed in this hour because God the Father, Elohim. He's the creator. So we need that dimension in the conference. So you are one of our VIP speakers. We have a special promotion we're going today. This is the seventh annual conference. This is our seventh conference. We're giving 10% off the VIP wow. registration today only. So guys, I want you to get yourselves registered. Go to thechosenconference.com. If you want to receive an impartation, I'm asking all of the speakers to release impartation, whether they're going to lay hands on you personally, but there yes. is going to be a time of impartation. Now, I do believe in that God could send his word. He can send the word and we can receive impartation through watching online. But I'm, there's nothing like getting those hands laid on you. That's, the, That's right. The mission God is released. That's the paradigm. He said we shall lay hands on the sick. We shall impart. Apostle Paul said, I long to be with you that I may impart unto you some spiritual gifts so that you can be established. So I do believe there's going to be mantles of creativity released in this chosen conference. I can't wait to hear you. Nice. Apostle, I'm just praying that God's grace and mercy will continue to rest on your life, that you will continue to walk under an open heaven. I'm praying for that anointing that was on Solomon to rest upon your life. You know how Solomon built such a phenomenal, uh, he, his palace, his kingdom was ran with such beauty and splendor that kings of the earth came to see what he was building. So I am praying in this hour that God would do something so supernatural and phenomenal in your life that you would just rejoice all the days of your life. So I love you. I am excited for all that God is doing in your life. I'm glad God connected. As you know, I, I was with you when you were in the living room. So yes. <laughs> we yes. go yes. all the yes. way back yes. to the living room. That is true. But anyone that is true. can see the grace and the gifting uh, that was on your life and it, it, it continues to grow. And I'm just God, glad God just gave me the opportunity to be one just to it released words of encouragement, prophetic declarations yeah. over your life is truly an honor. I want to throw it back to you. If you have any final words, anything you want to say before we let you go. 
It's going to be like a family reunion. I can't wait to see you. I can't wait to see your husband. I can't wait to be around so many friends. Uh, Apostle Posey, I can't wait to see them again. I just want to thank you so much. You have been there since the beginning. Uh, I want to even shout out uh, Marcus Beaver. You know, I remember Marcus Beaver coming to the house and releasing the prophetic word. But so many people that uh, our relationship hooked me up with so many people that really gave me a firm foundation. I just want to say thank you to all of them. And I love you. And I can't, I can't wait to see you. I appreciate you and come and see us at the chosen. I want to lay hands. I want to pray for you. And I can't wait for you guys to get this teaching, but you got to get at the chosen. Like prophet has said, there's a different grace. There's a different grace uh, when you're in the building and there's a power of proximity. So whatever you have to do, get there. Can't wait to see you there. Amen. Thank you so much, Apostle. Now, I just want to, uh, I'm telling you guys, those that are on here watching uh, right now, I believe that this is such a season uh, where God is uh, empowering us to do everything he's called us to do in this hour. One of the things with the Chosen Conference, God has given me an ability to, to galvanize the team. And the difference with this particular team is we are family. We we pioneer together. We all have history where we move together. Uh, it's not just a conference where you're going to see one speaker come in and preach their word and leave. We are moving and we're pressing into be, demonstrating what apostolic prophetic teams look like. We create an atmosphere of worship. We create an atmosphere of the presence of the Lord. We, we even have people we bring in and, and their assignment is to pray. It'll be times where you can just be saturated in the glory of the Lord. We have a phenomenal worship team that's coming. So I want you guys to get yourselves registered, get your hope, book your hotels. Uh, we, you can go to thechosenconference.com, thechosenconference.com. Get yourself registered. We're going to be in Chicago this year. It's going to be a phenomenal hotel. It's the Lowe's Hotel. But this is such a time where I a preparation. Normally, we like to have time, a lot of downtime. I'm usually in a resort. But the Lord said this year, the seventh year, he's put in a seal on the conference and we're going to go to a new to new dimensions. So go get yourself registered. Thechosenconference.com. We today and today only we have a set this um, a 10 percent discount. If you use the promo code seven off of VIP only VIP registration, Apostle Brian is going to be speaking at the VIP sessions and they begin on Thursday, August 31st. Uh, our first worship starts at. Well, prayer starts at nine. Worship probably starts more like at 930. And then he's going to be up, I believe, at 11, if I'm not mistaken. But anyway, you can go to thechosenconference.com. All of the information there, conference schedule is there. All the speaker schedule is there. So we're excited to have you guys come, get registered. I am so excited. I'm so excited. So I love you all. Thank you for joining us. I just decree the favor of God over your lives. I pray that God will be begin to shift you to a new level of glory, a new level of power. I decree in this hour everything you need to walk in your purpose and your destiny and that you will remember that you were chosen for such a time as this. You didn't choose God, but God chose you. Before you were in your mother's womb, he chose you and he put you in this generation to continually to walk in his glory, to continually walk in power, but also to activate you. I believe every person has a grace and a gift to release to the next generation. So this see, this conference is called Chosen from Generation to Generation. It is going to be a phenomenal time. I love you guys. Thank you so much for joining and we'll see you back here tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. Central Time, 7 a.m. Eastern Standard. I love you. God bless you and have a favorite field day.